All right, in this video, we wanted to go over the risks of Edison Motors. As you guys know, for those of you thinking about investing or have invested, Edison Motors is a risky investment. Uh, we are a startup company, and with that comes certain risks. But you guys have had a lot of questions about what are the risks, uh, what risks do we face, and how are we managing? What's our risk management strategy going to be? I want to start off with internal risks. These are things that are within our control, things that we can directly manage. We have things like technology risks. As you guys know, we built Topsy, Topsy works. We've learned a lot, we've made some changes, we've made upgrades, we've improved how some of the components works, but we are now putting new components into a truck again. We have the theory that they are gonna be better components and gonna be improved based on the knowledge we've learned. But as we know, when you build something, um, it's still an unknown category. We haven't physically built it with the new components. We're working on it. They're doing it right now in the shop and we're gonna hopefully get those pieces into Topsy so that we can start some programming on that before the customers receive the trucks. But that is still a risk that we have issues with the new parts. How we're mitigating that risk is by making sure that we do small batch production. We're not just building a prototype like Topsy and then saying, hey, we're gonna be full production, Put your orders in guys we're going to build as many trucks as we can and we're going to start rolling them out and we'll fix them if we go because then we may end up in a situation where we have a recall of hundreds and hundreds of trucks like we've seen with companies like nikola motors no what we want is we want to take it a little bit slower we want to build a few trucks we're going to build five pickups and we're going to build five semi trucks and we're going to test those out with that over two three years to really see what's going on and what changes we need to make to mitigate those technology risks before we go into production and the recalls get exponentially more expensive. So that's how we're handling our technology risk. We're just keeping things smaller and we're learning and then we're going. It does make it a little bit later to get to market, which as you see in one of our other videos is one of the reasons for the reduction for a net present value reduction in that because we do have a longer lead time. But we think that mitigating that technology risk is worth the uh, longer lead time to production. Some of the other internal risks we have are obviously health and safety of our employees. Uh, being a smaller team, we have just key people. So we're keeping a huge mind on safety, those sorts of issues, making sure everyone's safe, making sure that all employees are happy, that they're enjoying their jobs, that they're finding rewarding work. Because when you reward your employees properly, we give them the right incentives. They have some ownership structure that they get. We ask them about their job and improvements. We want to make sure they're happy because when you only have a few people, every one of those people is so key to the team. Moving on to external risks to the uh, company. Well, obviously one of the big external risks right now that's hot in the news is tariffs. There is a little bit of uncertainty going on with the U.S threatening tariffs on Canada, with Canada and the US both communally threatening tariffs on China and Chinese made EV vehicles. One of the big risks here is that we do source some of our supplies from China. We've tried to mitigate this risk by sourcing as many parts as possible from North America. You've seen some of our videos with Penticton Foundry, Wacon Steel, Masabi Rad, there's a lot of parts that are made here and we use those when we can, but some of the parts just aren't made here. That is one of the big issues. When it comes to a lot of these EV parts, they're just not made in North America. We've looked, we've tried to find ones that we could purchase. They're either not made here or they're not available for sale here to us. We just can't buy them. So there's nothing we can do about it. One of the things though is that I've seen some of the other trucks and a lot of our competitors use similar parts that all come from Asia. So we know we're in the same boat as our competitors. We hope that the tariff amount would stay small, but it'll just end up having to increase the price of the trucks. And we hope that that correlates with our competitors increase. And it's just something the market can bear. But unfortunately, there's just not a lot we can do about that. We'll keep working to try and resource things to North America as much as I can. But I can't turn around and ask these large manufacturers to rebuild, move their plant here. That's something they're going to have to decide. We just don't have that kind of purchasing power to dictate where our parts are made, unfortunately. Going on to the next one, regulatory compliance. That's obviously one of the big hurdles for us being truck drivers. I've joked about it, but it's there's some truth to it. It's easier to build the trucks than it is to do the paperwork to build the trucks. Now, ways that we're mitigating that risk, we are 
taking on a little bit at a time. We've hired consultants where we needed to hire consultants. There's been certain times where our areas of expertise are lax. We've had to hire those people to help guide us through, like for CMVSS. We've hired CMVSS experts that have worked with over 20 companies to help them make sure that their equipment was in compliance with Canadian vehicle safety standards. And they're submitting that paperwork for us, so we make sure it's done right. And the other way we're doing that with a smaller team is we're taking on market segments. We're just tackling CMVSS right now and one for the next trucks because the next trucks are just sold in Canada. Uh, it costs a lot more. It's progressively exponentially more expensive to go through FMVSS in the US. So we're going to do the Canadian one first. Then we'll move into the US. Same as when it comes to investment, all that. We have hired lawyers, we listen to their advice, and we execute on their advice on what they can say is right for when it comes to investment, health and safety. Uh, same thing, we're gonna keep following those procedures. We're gonna try as much as we can, but there are overstacking regulations where there's just so much piled on and so many contradictory regulations that staying in compliance is hard, but we are actively working on that. One of the other risks we have is intellectual property. People ask us, how are we protecting our IP? We do have an intellectual property policy. We have an IP strategy. We've actually received um, a little bit of funding from organizations that help people out with IP for startups in Canada. They've been working as consultants, guiding us through. We have several pieces of IP delivered. Uh, I believe they're delivered now. Uh, trademarks delivered at least. And then we also have patents pending. We have over 20, 30 patents pending. We have some that have finished, some that are starting at various stages. We have an IP policy for our employees that they submit to make sure that the IP stays in Edison Motors, that they're gonna get credit for anything they're doing. And when they're successful, we have a chair strategy where if uh, one of our engineers develops IP and is successful getting the IP through, they're rewarded with shares in the company. So that's how we're rewarding them, making sure it stays fair, but making sure that Edison retains all IP. We're doing this on one thing, number one, this is stuff we develop. This is stuff that we wanna make sure we own and stuff that we wanna make sure that we're not getting locked out of our own designs. So an IP strategy is very important to mitigate that kind of risk. Another risk is undercapitalization. That is one of the larger risks for Edison Motors. What happens if we don't raise enough money? Right now, at the time of making this video, I believe we're just over $3 million in investment raise. Our goal that we wanted was 10 million. Our maximum goal was 20 million. But what happens if we don't get there? Now we're acquiring the shop and the property. We've got companies funding it and it looks like we're gonna be able to raise more. But one of the problems is the accredited only, we haven't taken large investors money. We haven't gone down the venture capital route because I want to stay true to our vision that our fans uh, help support and our early investors support. The right to repair, the no planned obsolescence. So it does rule out a lot of the big guys. But one of the ways we are mitigating this um, undercapitalization risk is by keeping expenses low. So you guys know I am still here in my parents' basement down below, my, <laughs> down below me right here. We're still out of a tent shop. We're doing what we can to keep those um, keep expenses as low as possible. We're keeping a smaller engineering staff. We're using things like to our advantage. It's a core belief that we use off the shelf parts so that customers can repair their trucks easier. But it also makes it easier to design, build, and because uh, we're not have we don't need three four hundred engineers to design all the parts on the truck. We just need a few good mechanics to pick out those parts and place them onto the truck. So things like that. And then the other thing for undercapitalization is that we are keen and making sure that we do make some profit off of these first trucks. That's a crazy business strategy I know for an EV startup, but we need to be profitable. We need to have a minimum viable truck, which is about 10 trucks we need to make a little bit of a profit or to keep the lights on. We're doing things like making sure that the property has external income. As you've seen in one of the other videos on Golden, the property we're buying generates about $250,000, $300,000 a year in revenue off of the people that have leased out that property. That covers engineering costs for most of the engineers. We're making sure that we keep the YouTube revenue, the merch revenue, all of those things. We want to make sure that that money is covering our overhead 
so that the money used to build the trucks can actually build the trucks and keep us self-sustaining so that we're not just constantly burning capital. It's one of the big risks on a lot of these companies is that they get addicted to investor money and they just rely on that investor money. And then as we've seen over the last few years, when interest rates went up, uh, money got more expensive, investment dried up, and you see a rash of these companies going bankrupt. I don't want to do that. I've got a policy. We have not taken on any debt, nor do we plan on taking on any debt. Debt is the one thing that will drive a company to bankruptcy faster than anything. We are going and operating off under our means and under the cash um, revenue that we have, under the truck sales. We're not overextending and we're not increasing our burn rate. We're doing it sensibly with common sense, starting slow and gradually expanding the way a proper business should. Those are what I believe the largest key risks. If you have any other questions about risks or risks that I may not have addressed in this video, these are the most common ones. Uh, please leave a comment down in the comment section and we'll try to respond to as many as we can on those other risks and how we're mitigating them. But uh, thank you for this sitting through this video. All right, guys, I want to just take a couple seconds. We're not doing an ad. I just want to thank everyone that's invested with Edison Motors. You guys know we don't have venture capital. We don't have that kind of money. We told them no. We are invested and owned by the fans like you who are watching this video. You guys supported us all the way when it was just an idea through building Carl to building Topsy. And now as we go back into our next production run, taking this next step. So all of you that supported us, invested with us, thank you so, so much. We appreciate it more than you know.